Living on a farm can present you with many challenges that are often rewarding. But it seems there is a darker side to the good old farm life. These people share their allegedly true stories from working or living on farms in the middle of nowhere. These were some truly creepy ones if I do say so myself. If you have a story you would like to share on a future episode, be sure to visit swampdweller.net and submit your story. I would love to share it with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. Before we jump into these stories, I just wanted to do one last quick shout out for my friend, Sociopathic Pasta. His channel was recently deleted by YouTube for some unfortunate circumstances. It would be awesome if you would possibly check out his new channel, Cleaving Thought From Bone, and check out some of his scary story videos. I'm sure you will enjoy them. Now, let us descend into these creepy, allegedly true farm stories. This story took place around December 2017 at my boyfriend's farm outside of a small town in Nebraska. This happened when I was 16 years old and I still remember it because every second of it was burned into my mind and ultimately ruined my Christmas and New Year's out of paranoia and fear. Anyways, it was a cold December night. I remember specifically December 21st because I had just gotten out of school for break. My boyfriend Jacob and our friends, Lucy, Ryan, and Hunter, were hanging out at Jacob's house which is in a wooded area that only has a few neighbors who are about a few miles apart. Jacob had just gotten a new UTV as an early Christmas present, and we were all excited to take it out for a ride. So we all loaded into the six-seated vehicle around 10 o'clock at night, with Jacob driving me in the middle next to him and Hunter next to me while Lucy and her boyfriend Ryan were having a little private time in the back. We headed down the dirt road and onto a path into the woods which made me nervous as it is. I suffer from anxiety and being in the middle of a dark forest most likely with no service had me scared enough. Keep in mind it was about 25 degrees outside and going 40 miles per hour with no windshield to protect you. It was pretty cold. In fact, it was so cold that my legs are starting to become numb. I made Jacob stop the vehicle so I could switch seats with Ryan and have some gossip time with my bestie in the back seat. Just as Ryan and I got out of the UTV to switch, we heard a sound that I will never forget. It was a screech that sounded something between a woman screaming and a pig squealing. Lucy and I were terrified while the boys were all trying to rationalize the situation and calm us down. However, I wouldn't have it and wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. We tried to forget about it and load it back into the vehicle, but when Jacob tried to start the vehicle, however, the most cliche thing happened. The UTV would not start, which we all found was strange because he had just gotten it about a week ago and had only driven it a few times. I was terrified and didn't want anything to do with this. but. I was there and this was really happening. Jacob decided that a few of us would stay here while some of us would go get the truck and pick the rest of us up. We decided that Jacob, Hunter, and I would go and Lucy, Ryan would stay. And we would keep watch because there was no way he would leave it there unsupervised while someone would get a free UTV. The three of us set off on the dirt road towards Jacob's house which was maybe a mile or so away. I was tired and quite terrified because I couldn't get that scream out of my mind. Jacob was trying to chat with me to calm me down. Now I am a very readable person and you can tell when I'm sad, mad, scared, etc. So we could tell something was up. Jacob was about to ask what was up, but before he could, Hunter put his finger over his lips and signaled him to shut up. Hunter is a tiny but mighty guy and he can unleash hell on anyone with a short glance. We stopped and listened for a minute or two and heard nothing, but just as I was about to say something we heard that scream again. I was ready to drop everything and soil my pants, then run, but Jay stopped me and said, Babe, it's just a coyote, let's keep going, we don't have much further to go. I wasn't having any of this BS and I was just ready to run. I'd heard of skinwalkers, wendigo, dogman, etc and all of this was running through my mind. 
I was broken from my thoughts when Hunter grasped me and pointed his flashlight at a god-awful sight that I would never forget. It was at least seven foot tall and a ghastly ghost white color. It had huge yellow cat-like eyes and a big mouth with razor-sharp teeth that were forming into a crooked smile. I found myself trapped in his eyes and I wanted to go up and talk with it for some reason like it was trying to lure me in. Before I could take a step forward, Jacob grabbed my arm and practically dragged me behind him and Hunter as we ran. We ran and didn't stop until we made it back to the UTV and jumped in and interrupted Ryan and Lucy while they were having a moment. Jacob tried to start, but he was just crying because it wouldn't. I heard the screech again and I started bawling with Lucy and Ryan. They didn't know what the heck was going on. With a big bang, luckily, the UTV started and Jacob quickly made a turnaround and started driving as fast as we could. We heard that god-awful screech as we boomed down that dirt road. Once we got back, we sprinted to the door and locked it. Jacob's dad was confused and didn't know what the heck was going on either, and we practically threw out the story all over him. He tried to write it off as a diseased bear or a wolf, but this just made all of us mad. Hunter, Lucy, Ryan, and I were way too terrified to drive ourselves home, let alone step foot outside. So we all called our parents to let them know we were staying at Jacob's house. We all slept in the living room with me on the couch, Lucy on the recliner chair, and the guys on the floor. I swore I heard the screeching outside, but I can't be sure that's it. I never saw that thing and its yellow eyes again. Jacob and I now live together, and his father still owns the farm. I refuse to visit unless it's during the daytime. That said, even if it is the daytime, I'll never in a million years go near that dirt road again. I'm about 23 now and this happened to be back in high school in the beginning of college. My best friend from my hometown seems to be a magnet for the paranormal. Her and I both have had our fair share of creepy stuff happen to us, but this experience is one story I don't mind telling people because it's very tangible and real since it happened to both of us, and I feel a little less crazy talking about it knowing other people experienced it too. So my good friend, let's call her Ginny, has always been sensitive to the paranormal. Ginny's best friend, let's call her Liz, is somewhat the opposite, doesn't preoccupy herself with these kinds of things and doesn't like to talk about the paranormal. Ginny and I were neighbors, while Liz lived 20 or so minutes away in a different town. So, most nights, we would hang out at my house or Ginny's and Liz would sleep over at Ginny's while I just went home, cause I'm a guy. Liz's hometown is an old farming community halfway to Philadelphia from the metropolitan area Ginny and I were from. It's an old town along a river with old houses and farms and very few residents. Normally, we didn't spend too much time at Liz's house and Ginny rarely slept over. I have since realized there was a reason Ginny didn't like staying there. Anyways, one day during the winter break, we decided we wanted to make a day trip to New York. And since Liz's dad works close to the city, we planned on riding with him and taking a train in. So naturally, we decided to sleep over at Liz's house that night because we had to get up early to ride into the city. That night, Liz and Ginny slept upstairs in Liz's room, while I slept on the couch downstairs in the living room. Liz's house was old, creaky, and had lots of history, and I couldn't help but feel a little uneasy as everyone was settling into bed and I was alone in the living room. Their Christmas tree was up and had dim light so I could keep it on as a nightlight but the surrounding house was still very dark. Sometime around 3 a.m., I woke up uneasily and just felt like something is wrong. It was a hard feeling to explain, but the closest I can think of is dreadful fear without the sense of danger. Like I was a child looking at a scary Halloween mask. I somehow knew I wasn't in danger, but I was still frozen with fear. That's when I hear the stairs creaking slowly as something was walking down the stairs from behind the couch I'm on. My back is turned to the stairs as I lay on the couch. I throw the blanket over my feet and pull over my head and close my eyes like a child. I just somehow knew it was not my friends or their parents. It walks slowly, with a constant cadence. 
I could tell from how the stairs were creaking that it wasn't very heavy. I hear it reach the bottom of the stairs and start to hear its footsteps turn as it was clacking towards where I was. It sounded a lot like a dog with long nails walking on the hardwood floor. I hear it reaching the end of the hallway about to enter the kitchen, where it would be out of my sight. So I decide to pop my head out from under the blankets and over the couch rim. I see it for a second before it walks behind the kitchen wall out of my view. It probably sounds a little comical and cartoonish as I write it out, but let me assure you this thing was terrifying to encounter in a dark house in the dead of night. It was at least seven feet tall, with incredibly bone-thin legs and knobby knees. Its feet reminded me of a bald eagle's claw. It had humanoid arms, but instead of hands, they tapered to feathers. Its whole upper body had a scarce amount of feathers on it, while its skin looked like an overcooked chicken. Its head was like a newly hatched bird, except for its beak, which was at least three head lengths long, thin, and drooped down in a curve. It stood and walked slowly and elegantly in a strong, upright posture with broad shoulders, head, and directly forward. Its eyes were large triangle shapes, somewhat resembling the Pokemon Zapdos. I immediately pulled the blanket over my head again and closed my eyes. I don't know how long I sat there, frozen, but for a while, I would say. I just kept hearing it walk through the dining room into the living room where I was and stand directly in front of the couch looking over me. I kept my eyes closed under the blanket for what seemed like a few minutes. I finally opened them after a while to see its shadow in front of the Christmas tree lights through the blue haze of the, f the fuzzy blanket that was over my head. As soon as I saw it, it turned to the right and walked back up the stairs. Needless to say, I was terrified and couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Suddenly, I remember waking up and it being dawn. It was different though. Once the sun was up, my friends were up as well, and all was good and I pretty much forgot about it. Although Ginny suspiciously asked me how I slept in the absence of Liz later that day, I said fine, thinking it was just a nightmare. A few weeks later, Ginny casually mentions to me that she doesn't like sleeping at Liz's because it's haunted. Suddenly remembering my experience, I asked her to elaborate and she tells me she always feels weird in Liz's room and they saw something in a picture they took once. Naturally, I make her show me. Someone had taken a picture of Liv and Ginny sitting on Liz's bed, arms interlocked, flashing peace signs as teenagers did in the 2010s. They sent it to me over Snapchat, and like something out of an urban legend horror movie, the recipient took a screenshot and responded, What's that behind you? In the daylight between their arms, there was a bird-shaped face with angry-looking triangular eyes. It wasn't ghostly or anything. It was clear as day, but it was only a portion of the face with it blurring around the edges into the normal picture background. Ginny and the picture taker were clearly freaked out while Liz was just a little unsettled and told Ginny to delete the picture and not talk about it. Ginny kept the picture and showed it to me. She even mentioned she knew why it was a bird of all things, but I don't think I ever got an explanation. I never did tell the girls about my experience, and I don't really want to post the picture because both Ginny and Liz are in it. I do have a copy of the photo, but that was a few phones ago, and I don't think I have it anymore. I don't want to risk Jenny getting mad for me searing it either, but I might ask her to send it to me again. This is a story my mom told me from when I was only two years old. My family has a small acreage in the Canadian prairies. It is not too far out from the city, but far enough that it was very rare to have unexpected visitors. At the time, we had some sheep and chickens, but it wasn't a very huge farm. It was just my mom, my dad, my sister, and I. My sister was at least five years older than me at the time, so only seven. We also had a sweet dog named Maggie. My parents have always said that she was the best farm dog we ever had. 
She was some sort of a bouvier crossed with shaggy black hair and was very smart and was very nice with animals and kids. She also never barked or got upset without a very good reason, much unlike our last pup who, bless her soul, would bark at the wind. My dad was out of town this particular night, probably visiting my grandfather in this town down south. My mom was alone with just us and Maggie. My mom woke up in the middle of the night to Maggie growling. My mom's a pretty light sleeper so it doesn't take much to wake her up, but this was very unusual behavior for our dog. My mom thought it was probably an animal so she took a peek outside. Sometimes coyotes or large bucks would upset Maggie, so that was the most likely explanation. However, this wasn't the case that night. Our farm is right adjacent to the highway, and there is a long, unlit lane that leads into our yard. It wasn't obvious at first, but my mom saw a dark vehicle slowly creeping down the lane. The car's headlights were shut off, and we didn't have a lot of light in the yard. My mom's stomach immediately sunk. Anyone with good intentions wouldn't shut their headlights off. She also had two little kids in the house that she had to protect. She watched them slowly creep into the yard. I don't know how many there were, but at least a couple of guys got out of the vehicle and headed towards the shop where my dad keeps his tools, tractor, etc. At the time, there was a big power panel on the side that controlled the electricity to the yards in the house. They opened it up and started to go through it. Evidently, trying to figure out how to shut off the power. God knows what their intentions were. Luckily, my family who has a hunting rifle, my mom grew up on a farm so she knows how to use a gun. Rifle in hand, she quietly propped open the door just enough to stick the bear out. She fired a few warning shots in the guy's directions. They freaked out, hopped in their vehicle, reversing all the way down the lane so that they couldn't see their license plate. I honestly have no idea what those guys were planning on or what they were doing. Maybe they just wanted to rob us, but the idea of people pulling into the yard with no headlights, shutting off the power is unsettling. Either way, I'm extremely grateful for our sweet Maggie and badass mom for keeping us safe. It's been 21 years since this happened. At the time of my experience, it was two months after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. I was living with my uncle and aunt on their farm. Their farm is located on top of a mountain that forms part of El Yunque. El Yunque is a mountain range that is a national preserve and there are rumors that government uses it as a lab. Think of it as the Area 51 of Puerto Rico. My uncle has told me several times to be careful when I go outside at night because I can get lost or a group of wild hogs could attack me. Usually. I don't go outside at night because I don't have a reason to do so. One night, I was with my cousin Miguel. Note, I am 17 and my cousin is 23. We were joking around and suddenly we heard a loud screech. The kind of scream that an animal in horrible pain would do. I asked Mike if he knew what the hell that might have been, and he didn't respond. I asked him again and he still didn't answer. He only told me to get my crossbow and to meet him in front of the house. We went first to check the cows. All the cows seemed okay, but they were all grouped in a corner, which seemed weird, but we forgot about it. We then went to check on the pigs. Every pig was organized in a cage of 15 square feet in which we had to check one by one. All the pigs looked scared. We then reached the last cage in which Colonel, who was supposed to be my uncle's fattest pig, but... The cage was empty with what was something weird about it though, because we had checked on him when we had first gotten home, and he was there. We started looking to see if there were remains or something, but we found nothing except some blood on the mud. Then we heard another screech that sounded like it had come from really close by. We ran out and started looking for a huge pig, but we didn't see anything. We decided to split up so we could cover more ground. I went down a trail that has a lot of trees on each side. I started hearing heavy footsteps like 20 feet from where I was standing. I decided to keep walking when I reached the place that the heavy footsteps were coming from. I saw what I can only describe as red dots. I flashed my flashlight at it and that's what I saw it. 
the ugliest thing I have ever seen. A black humanoid canine thing that looked grotesque. It didn't have hair, just rugged skin. Its face looked like one that a bat would have, but with giant teeth that looked to be bigger than its own face. That's when I knew I had encountered the Chupacabra. Luckily, he didn't notice me. He was distracted with something else. I noticed that he was eating Colonel alive. At that moment, I silently backed off and hid behind a fallen tree. I had to witness how he ate Colonel. I, I was in tears. I then decided to kill that thing with my crossbow. I aimed at him and took my shot and I hit him in the ribs. He started shrieking and running down the mountain. I then called Miguel and told him to come where I was since we needed to bring back Harnel, or at least try to. We decided to do it the next day. Miguel asked me what was all of that screaming. I told him that it was the pig suffering because I knew my cousin would try to go after that thing and kill it himself. We started going back to catch some sleep, but I couldn't sleep. I just kept seeing that thing in my mind. In the morning, I went back with Miguel to retrieve Colonel's carcass. The body was intact except that it didn't have any more blood, and it only had one small hole on the side. Miguel started laughing, and I was like, what the heck is he laughing at? He then told me he thought that the Chupacabra was one that snatched Colonel, and he was so skeptical about it that he forgot. When I told him that I saw it and shot it in the ribs, Miguel said that my uncle once shot the Chupacabra in the face with a shotgun and left it for dead, but apparently, the thing lived. After that night, I'm not going to step foot in the forest without a weapon. It was around late August, early September in 2012 when I lived in a farmhouse in northwestern Pennsylvania about an hour and a half drive from the New York state line that used to be owned by an Amish family until they moved to New York. I was aware of the UFO phenomenon as my late grandfather was also someone who claimed to have seen UFOs. He was a semi driver for a living, so let me set the scene. My house was near the top of a big hill that stretched down from the road up to our driveway, about 30 yards. We had pictures further up the hill and a neighbor to the left of the house about 100 yards away. I was getting close to winter. So we were gearing up and getting ready and getting our wood from the woods onto the right side of the pasture. The pasture was a very overgrown because of this and I at the 16th at the time had to use our brush hog, tractor for mowing large weeds and small trees for those who do not know. We had to use this to mow a path to the woods that was around 600 yards away give or take so that we could go cut the trees and drag them down to the house to be cut and split. So as I'm finishing up the last pass for the path, I'm driving up the hill on the tractor and I'm looking towards the sky because it was almost dusk. I was looking at the clouds and admiring my new home's view when out of nowhere right above the tree line about 300 yards away, two UFOs suddenly came into view. One first, then the other as if the second was chasing the first. They seemed to have warped to the location I saw and then very quickly they disappeared. It was more quick than anything I had ever seen. They shot towards my left. They looked very shiny as the setting sun glared off the top of them and I clearly saw a dome on top. I was so shocked that I stopped the tractor and ran back down to my brother where he was next to my father. I was so shocked that I stopped the tractor and ran back down to the house and ran inside. I was the only one home at the time as my mother worked as a CNA for a local care home and my brother was at his father's for the summer. After I saw the two UFOs I became ever more paranoid that I was being watched, especially at night. There was one night my younger brother ran up to our bedroom and woke me up saying that he saw a face in the window of our living room and he specifically said an alien face. I being the older brother felt I needed to show no fear so I jumped up and went downstairs to our porch and opened the door and saw nothing but got very intense chills and the feeling of eyes piercing through me. We both about messed our pants when our indoor outdoor cat jumped from the ground up to the porch. 
We told ourselves it was just him he saw, but I know deep down we both still feel like it wasn't him. Has anyone around northwestern Pennsylvania ever witnessed anything like this? I remember this so well, so I know I didn't just imagine it. I remember how terrified I was when I saw the UFOs because I used to listen to my grandfather talk about it, and that's sort of where I got the interest into the whole subject. I'd love to hear any thoughts. My grandma lived on a huge farm when I was a little kid and I loved going to stay with her as I love animals and a farm is any little kid's dreamland. She owned a lot of land and my brother and I were allowed to go anywhere we wanted as long as we stayed on the property and came back before dark. One day we decided to follow a creek all the way to its end, which resulted in us crossing the fence and leaving my grandma's property. We soon came across an old rundown cabin and for some reason, we decided to go inside. It was probably young curiosity, I guess. As we stepped inside, it was as if we walked into a totally different cabin. From the outside, it was very old and almost falling apart, but on the inside, it was as if a family lived there. There were dishes on the table as if they had had dinner, and it actually smelled like spaghetti. The beds were all made up perfectly. Furniture was outdated, but still in good condition. The floor and the wallpaper were also in good condition. There was no dust or cobwebs, no dirt or damp smell. It was warm. It was as if the family left in a hurry and left all their belongings behind and definitely not that long ago. We ran all the way back to my grandma's house excited to tell her about our new discovery. After a good scolding about leaving the property in a game of 20 questions, my grandma wanted to see this place for herself because her closest neighbor wasn't even near the area we were describing to her. We all three set off to find the cabin. We followed the creek as we had done before, passed through the fence, and went all the way down to where the cabin was. Except, this time, there was no cabin. It was just gone. Like it vanished into thin air. We looked for an hour trying to find it and couldn't. My grandma finally decided it was time to go home. She was pretty mad at us for leaving the property, but she never discredited our claims of seeing this cabin. I look back on it and lots of weird things happened on the farm. I just never realized it until I was older. The supernatural was also very drawn to my grandma and my brother. They both have many paranormal experiences that I personally saw as well. They just were happening to me. If you want to hear more tellings of the farm or my family, just let me know. Thanks for sharing my story. So to start off, I grew up on a small farm surrounded by forest. It's a small town below a major city in Appalachia. The first incident with this entity was probably when I was maybe 8 to 10, so 10 or 13 years ago. I was in my bedroom at home listening to music and playing. My window was open and it was evening, getting dark but I could still see outside. I noticed my dad walking by my window, stone faced. I was going to say hello to him, but decided not to. Later, I mentioned it to my mom that I saw my dad pass my window. She informs me that my dad was at home and was away. And she also said that, anyway, my window was way too high, so there's no way I would have been able to see my dad walk by it. My mom decides that it was probably a bear. We had a lot of hunting dogs that very often would freak out over nothing but at the time of seeing what I thought was my dad, they weren't upset. I've mentioned this to my significant other before and my friends. We were talking about strange moments and my significant other tells me that this story reminds her of something that she saw when we were visiting my dad in his peripherals. He said it looked like a very tall person who didn't see specific details, but that it walked past the large kitchen window. He meant to tell me earlier, but honestly forgot. It's really weird and I'm not sure what else to think about it, but since my significant other told me he saw it too, I've been trying to research what it might be. I've also just felt creeped out of the thought of going to my dad's again. I've had a lot of other weird experiences that I'm not sure what to think of on that farm. 
such as going hiking and finding small shacks in the middle of the woods that are on my dad's property, then not being able to find them ever again. My mother calling me from outside while I was playing and telling me she heard screaming thinking it was me and couldn't see me in the yard and thought a wild animal could have grabbed me. Not sure if they're related, but I figured I'd add that. Thanks for listening to these allegedly true creepy farm stories. These were definitely some odd and creepy ones. I wouldn't want to be the one in any of these encounters, as I'm sure none of you would either. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. I appreciate all of your support. Stay tuned, as this week is a big one. I have a 25 minute documentary on the bunny upcoming as well as some creepy stories from the woods. If you have a story you would like to share on the show in a future episode, be sure to visit swampdweller.net and submit your story. I would love to share it with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going strong. This is one of my favorite new series on the channel, and I do hope people keep sending in their stories of these creepy farms. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.